everyone in this room are controlled by things. You need deliverance from things. And I want to show you in this series on the kingdom, in this segment, how Jesus describes the power of things over our lives. So our theme today is the kingdom key to accessing the things of the kingdom. Understanding the principle of how to live effectively in kingdom life and how to walk in that understanding. I want to begin by reminding us of what we should be focusing on, kingdom priority. In the book of Matthew chapter 6, our foundational verse statements by Jesus. This entire conversation that Jesus was having began with a warning. He began it with a warning. He says, do not worry about what you will eat, what you will drink, what you will wear. And he made a whole list of things. And he, says, he says in verse, 30, uh, verse 33, he says, but seek first. Don't seek things first. Seek first what? The kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things. We're going to talk about things today. The only competition that the kingdom has is things. You're either seeking things or you're seeking the kingdom. That thing jumped off the page into my face three weeks ago. As I keep pondering the word, how simple Jesus has made life. Life is either between things or the kingdom. And if you seek things first, then you will be destroyed by things. Things will become your God. So Christ says, stop worrying about things. Things should be added to your life. He says, if you're going to exert energy, look at the word seek. If you're going to exert any energy in life, let the energy go toward the kingdom, not the things. Most of us, not you, the one behind you, are tired because of things. We wear ourselves out for things. We take two jobs we, from our kids for things. We even break up our marriages going after things. We abandon our children because we need to get more things. Sacrifice our morality. Even sell our bodies and our integrity. Compromise our values in order to get more things. Boy, things are powerful. And yet Jesus says, hey, Things supposed to just be at it. You ain't supposed to be pursuing them. If you're going to use energy, if you're going to pursue something, if you're going to seek something, if you're going to run after something, he says, run after the kingdom and what? Righteousness. Matter of fact, look at the statement concerning righteousness. He said, blessed are those who what? Hunger. Don't hunger for a new dress. Oh, that famous pair of shoes. The hunger just to go to Florida to shop. If I can just get to Orlando, I'll be a happy woman. He says, no. He says, hunger. I can't wait to get righteous. Hunger and thirst for righteousness. We talk about righteousness because righteousness is, according to Jesus, the other side of the kingdom coin. Look at the instruction. Seek first what? The kingdom and then righteousness. They both are two sides of one coin. Can I suggest then that the two priorities of God are very clear. Only two things he says to pursue. Number one, the kingdom. Write this down please. The kingdom is the governing influence of a king over a territory, impacting it with his will, his purpose, and his intent. In other words, seek the governing influence of God. Seek the, the impact of God's government in your life 
in your business, in your home, in your ministry, in your family, in your community, in your country, in your government. Seek the kingdom influence. Then it says righteousness. That is important to write down. Righteousness, as we talked about the last four weeks of my sessions, is to be righteous doesn't mean to wear long clothes or wear a cross around your neck or wear a turban. Righteousness is a legal word from the courts of law and it means the right positioning or the alignment with the governing authority of a country. To be righteous means to be rightly aligned with a government. That means you are doing everything to not break the laws of a country. That's called righteousness. So kingdom is the government. Righteousness is the relationship with the government. He says seek first the government of God and maintain right relationship with that government. And if you do those two things, he says, the government will add everything you need to your life. Let me give you a couple of verses you definitely want to write down. Uh, in the book of Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8, it says, Your throne, O God, will last forever and ever, and righteousness will be the scepter of your kingdom. Now the word scepter, write it down, means authority. The scepter is the, is the instrument that a king holds in his hands that indicates his authority. So when a king wants to give you favor, he would simply pick up this piece of instrument called a scepter and he would point it towards you. Once he points it towards you, whatever he says next becomes law over you. So what you want is a king to point his scepter at you. A king, once he points his scepter at you, he can say, you shall have 10,000 acres in the Midwest. And that's it. That means whoever is on the land, they got to move. Whatever is in the land is your property. And you ain't got to work for it at all because the authority was set. Now, a king always points the scepter with his right hand. This is why the right hand of a king is very important. When a king use his right hand, he always has the scepter in it. That's why the Bible talks about the right hand of the Lord is upon you. That means he has pointed his authority towards you. He has given you access. If you study the story of Esther, you'll understand how kingdoms work. You remember what Esther said. Now, here's something about kingdoms. You cannot enter the presence of a king without permission. And the permission comes from the scepter. When the king wants you to come into his throne room, he would point his scepter towards you, and then you can come in. This is why Esther, when you read the, the, the story of Esther, she was debating, should I go in? Because if I go in without the scepter, I could get killed. And she says, well, if I die, I die. But I have to get into the presence of the king. And when the king saw her, he extended his right hand. Boy, that's all you want God to do. Now, look at what the Bible calls the scepter. You control what he does with his hands. If you line yourself up with God, he will point his favor towards you and things that you work a thousand years for, he'll give you in two minutes. The authority of God, let me tell you something. Authority is better than work. Oh, I feel the anointing coming on me already. Please forgive me, hang on a second. Oh, hear me. I speak as a prophet this morning. This is different. The authority, Christine, the authority is more important than work. See, authority can cancel 10 years of work. That's why when I do business with any company, I always want to go to the top. You want to try to get to the top. Why? 
because the folks down below, they got delegated authority, and if they don't like you, they could block access. But I like when instructions come down. A king has the authority over his entire kingdom. And the Bible says the way to get his authority to work for you is by maintaining righteousness. That's why Jesus said, seek ye first to get into the kingdom of God and then maintain his righteousness and everything he points us except at you will be added to you. Look at this verse. It gets better. Hebrews 5, 12. Read aloud. Go. Anyone who lives, come on, read. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teachings about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. This is a very important verse. He says, People who are not experiencing the benefits of kingdom life are like little children who are sucking milk still. Look at the next statement. He says, they are not acquainted with what? The teachings about what? Righteousness. Let me tell you something, friends. We preach on sin all in the pulpits everywhere. Stop sinning. We preach on all kinds of stuff. He says, but they are not being taught about this most important subject of righteousness. If you teach people to stay lined up, he says, then, look at this, they will know how to distinguish what is against the law and what is the law. What is against the law and what is the law. He says the whole point is to train you to distinguish what can block your mortgage payment or what can give you access to mortgage payment. Your pastor, this senior pastor, I am dedicated to you. I love you so much. I want you to be totally debt free. And debt free doesn't mean that you ain't got no bills. It means you always got stuff to pay them off. Wealth in the kingdom of God is not storing stuff up. It's having access to everything. Every time you need it, it's there. Say amen, somebody. Because you see, you ain't got an account big enough to handle what God got. God wants you to live the same way you live with our water corporation. You know, when you work with our water corporation, they hook your house up to their tank. Because mm -hmm. your yard ain't big enough for the tank on the top of Blue Hill Road. All you want is water when you need it. So God says, I can hook your pipe up for you. My God shall supply all of my needs according to his tank in heaven. He said, now, all I want you to do is to keep the pipe clear. Everybody said righteousness. You will know different between the things that clog it up and the things that open it. That's righteousness. Here's another verse. What is the powerful stuff? Watch this. In the book of Job, chapter 36, verse 7, read aloud, read. He does, come on, read. He does not take his eyes of who? The righteous. He enthrones them with kings and exhausts them forever. Say amen to that man. Oh, brother, he said, look, I even, listen, I ain't only going to make you look good. I can make you sit good. He does that to the righteous. He will exalt the righteous. If you, stay, if you stay right with God, God 
will promote you in every situation you go into. You become the top in every situation. And they won't be able to understand why they appointed you to the board, why they gave you access to the boardroom. They won't they say, what? Who? You just came here two weeks ago? God says, because your pipe is clear, I'm going to make them exalt you. Lift your hands and glorify God. I was reading the scriptures this week in Tulsa when I teach it. The scripture which says, promotion doesn't come from the east nor the west. Promotion comes from above. That means God can pick you right up. And everybody mad at you. God does not exalt the educated. Read it. He exalts who? The righteous. You stay in line. Don't do nothing this week to mess with your relationship with heaven. Don't lie. Don't steal. Don't curse. Don't backbite. Don't have no deceit. Don't have no private jealousy. No envy. Have nothing in your heart. You want to keep your life clear. And when anybody attempts to irritate you, tell them, don't fool with my righteousness. Forgive them real fast. Boy, this ought to keep your heart right, eh? What do you say, daughter? It keep right. He say, hey, hey, hey. See, because when somebody starts getting on your vexation, it's up to you to keep the vex out of your pipe. That's why the Bible says, love your enemies. Why? You want to keep your pipe clear. Look at this verse. It's a powerful verse. And this one is Psalm 5, verse 12. Read out loud. For surely, O Lord, you have blessed what? The righteous. You surround them with your favor as with a shield. Listen, if you begin to consciously think righteously, live righteously, my sister, nothing they plan will touch you. You don't got to read these verses carefully. He can put a shield. When they start handing out pink slips, they pass your desk. Every insurance agent complaining about hard times, but you got more business than you ever had at the same time they're complaining. Why? He said, I put a shield around you. You better get this. Claim that right now. Claim. See, I claim that stuff. That means you are not normal. Your business will prosper when everybody else is having problems. Why? Because he's like, put a shield around the righteous. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no fuel shortage in my life. Say it. If I can get you to believe what I believe, you'll be okay. Say it again. There's no fuel shortage in my life. Say it like this. There's no fuel shortage in my country. Now, there may be fuel shortage in, in the Bahamas, but not in my country. Uh, I need some more volume on the mic, please. Sir, sound man, sound man. Thank you. Got some more volume, please. I'm working too hard. Don't let me work hard. Listen, if you understand righteousness, please. Take this into Monday morning. God makes locusts avoid certain crops. You all still ain't getting this revelation. He said, look, I'm going to put a shield around this farm. So when the locusts hit Egypt, the Bible says, the Lord told the locusts, do not touch the farms of the Israelites. How can a grasshopper tell the difference between your corn and my corn? Because there's a shield around the righteous. Scream hallelujah. Sir. Some of you believe that you are just a victim of the system. Today, I command you to leave the system and enter the kingdom of God and remain righteous and all of his things shall be added unto you. Shout amen. You are not a victim of your job. Matter of fact, your company you work for should be happy you come there. Because you are causing them to prosper because the Bible says the righteousness will exalt the nation. 
I am a blessing to the Bahamas. Did you know that? Yeah. Listen to me. I have received many invitations to become an American. Hope you all know that. This is a dangerous secret I've given you. They were willing to pay me thousands and hundreds of thousands to move to America. And they still are. Because they want to claim such a fine looking, good looking, handsome, smart, intelligent, productive, universal man. They want to claim me as credit. Say with me, the Bahamas is blessed because I am here. Righteousness what? Exhausts. It protects. That shield is so powerful that the Bible says God will not destroy the righteous with the wicked. That means if the wicked is smart, they will always have a righteous man. Y'all still ain't get that revelation. See, y'all don't believe me. Let me tell you. There's a guy whose name was Pharaoh. Pharaoh, listen. Pharaoh had problems until Joseph showed up. So Pharaoh told Joseph, I can fire everybody. Pharaoh fired everybody on his board and made Joe the chairman of the board and made him deputy prime minister. Why? He says, for when, I, he said, for when thou art with me, thy God prospers each. I want you to leave here today and tell the folks in your house, let me tell you all something, you all better appreciate me, appreciate me now. This house is safe because I sleep here. You go to school tomorrow and you tell that teacher in that classroom, let me tell you something teacher, this whole class is privileged to have me as a student in this class because this class is exalted and protected with the shield of God because of my presence. So don't make me leave this class. Look at this verse, Psalm 34. Out loud. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their cry. You remain aligned with God, God watches you. Can you think about it? When you leave here today, you say, Lord, I will do nothing to interfere with our relationship. I won't do anything to break the contact with my government. The Bible says, tell you what, he'll keep his eye on you. You get in traffic and a car comes hit you, he say, stop that car. Angel, stop the car, car running in the bush. His eye. When you go to get your, your, your promotion, he put his eye on you. When you go to buy a car, he put his eye on you. Favor comes from the bank. He got his eye on you. He says, I will watch over the righteous, those who are lined up. That's why I am never afraid, nor am I ashamed, nor am I wondering about my future, because my future has an eye on it. Here's one I thought was a, bit, a, a powerful revelation. Uh, Psalm 34, 17. Read out loud. Read. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from what? All their trouble. You get a line with God, God keeps delivering you. Delivering you. I mean, all, all your trouble. All. A-L-L-L-L. -L -L -L. Oh, you, that's why it's important to remain aligned with God. He keeps you from all the troubles. Here's one I thought was so potent. I could hardly sleep on this one. Psalm 34 verse 19 says, A righteous man may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. He protects all of his bones. Not one of them will be broken. Claim that right now. Just claim it. Just claim it. Come on. Just, just thank him for that right now. Your body, halakushi, ratabu, your husband's back is under God's eye. None of your bones will be broken. Listen. Do you know what the bone is? That, that doesn't only mean the bone in your body, you know. It's, a, it's an idiom. Bone refers to 
the frame that holds everything up. He, he said, I'm going to make sure everything that keeps your life up never falls apart. Oh, hallelujah, son. He says, I'm going to keep your frame intact. When people's lives collapse around you, a thousand will fall at your right and ten thousand fall at your left, but you're going to have your strong tower. The Bible says that when the winds blow and the waves come, it says the one on the sand will fall apart. But if you build your life on the righteous word of God, it shall stand through the hurricane. I predict and I prophesy that no hurricane shall touch your house in this season in Jesus' name. Now you better claim it now, you gotta claim it. No hurricane shall come near your house and destroy what holds you up. Your business shall not be affected by the elements in Jesus' name. He shall sustain you, he shall hold you up because you are righteous. Here's one I thought would be a blessing to everyone that reads it. Look at this one, read misfortune come on read it misfortune pursues the sinner but prosperity is the reward of the righteous that's why you better stop sinning right now you are attracting misfortune very important verse 22 a good man leaves what an inheritance to his children's children but a sinner's wealth is stored up for those who are aligned with God. How about claiming that one right now? You keep your life in sync with God. He says, the stuff that they have that belong to you will come towards you. Only the righteous. A lot of people have been claiming this verse, but they haven't been righteous. There's a qualification for the wealth. It has to be righteousness. A clean pipe. Clean life. I said a clean life. I said a clean life. And you know if your life ain't clean. Only you know your life. This nice suit and this dress you got on don't impress God. Is your life clean? You don't claim this stuff your life ain't clean. <laughs> All kind of rust in the pipe. And you're asking God to bless me. God said, yeah, the, the tank kept plenty of water, but it can't get to you. <laughs> yes, Lord. Lord, I'm going to keep quiet for a second so you can get that one. Clean your pipe out, please. Leave here, repent it, and clean. Break off some stuff that's messing up your, your pipe. Stop doing secret stuff that's messing up your pipe. The tank is full of water and you're thirsty. Nothing's wrong with the tank. Here's one. This one I had to think about. Because it talks about rewards. Psalm 58 verse 11. Read. Surely, come on out loud. Surely the righteous still are rewarded. Surely there is a God who judges the earth. He says as long as there's a God that is alive, the righteous will be rewarded. There's a reward for living clean. Psalm 92, verse 12, read. The righteous, come on, read. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon planted in the house of God. They will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh. Now some of y'all who are 50 better lift your hands and say, Lord, take it for that one. Just take it for that one. So you ain't supposed to die, cripple, or kapunkle up. Come on, say amen. I mean, at age 90, you're supposed to be fresh. Still fresh, fresh girl. It's a fresh man, just walking around like you like you're 12. Righteous supposed to grow old, fresh and strong. None of your bones shall be broken. Say this with me. I do not expect 
to die from disease. And I'm going to say that slow one more time. I wanted to get into your spirit. Say it. I will not die from disease. The old shall be fresh like a cedar. If you're righteous. What a powerful verse. Hey? Look at this one. Isaiah 28 verse 16. Read. So, come on, read. So this is what the sovereign Lord said. Now he's speaking to you. See, I lay a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone for a sure foundation. The one who trusts in him will never be dismayed. I will make justice the measuring line. Watch this. And righteousness the plumb line. Now every contractor in this room know what that is. What's a plumb line? Talk, help me out. What do you use a plumb line for? You contract it. What do you use it for? When you want something what? Straight. They use a piece of string with this weight on the bottom. That's a plumb line. And when the, when the contractor wanted to measure something straight, he used the plumb line to, where the plumb line drops, that means it is in line. God says, I use righteousness to measure whether you're in line. You come, God, oh God, I need this. God said, let me check where you are. And he dropped the plumb line. He said, no, child, you're sleeping with somebody. You ain't <laughs> oh God, I need a house. That's no problem. Let me, let me just check. He dropped the plumb line on you. Bam. You way over here. He over here. He said, yeah, man, you sleep with that young boy. Y'all ain't married. He uses righteousness as the plumb line. He check everything against righteousness. The kingdom got everything for you. Listen to Jesus. All of these things shall be added. He wants you to have all. But you got to be on the plumb line. Hallelujah. Being saved is not enough. Speaking in tongues doesn't get God to bless you. The plumb line. Hallelujah. You know, the plumb line could fall on things that you can't even see, like iniquity. Iniquity is sins you can't see, like jealousy. Having jealousy against somebody or secret envy. Plumb line drops. God says, no, I can't deal with you. And most of, the, of, of the, the stuff that's messing people up are the invisible sins. Like hatred and malice and deceit. You know the I mean? Stuff that you can't see. People look at you and they say, I don't like her. What do you mean you don't like her? She ain't doing you nothing. Deceit. No wonder why you broke. The plumb line falls. You ain't lined up. That's why I, in my life, I got to keep checking. Man, I got to make sure I keep checking. Why? Because I, I don't want nobody fool with my stuff that's coming toward me. All right. I want you to just read this verse. You know, uh, sometimes we, we think that if we do good things, God will bless us. Well, watch this. In Luke chapter 18, verse 28, Peter said to Jesus, We have left everything to follow there. You know, sometimes we, we, we get in God's face, you know, and try to put stuff on him. Lord, you know, I, I fasted five days without food, you know. Oh, God, I, I've, I've never missed a service in church, you know, Lord, all year. Oh, God, I've attended prayer meetings for the last six months, you know. All this stuff we put on God, as if we're doing God a favor. And here's Peter saying, I left all to follow you. Aren't you proud of me? Don't you like me for what I've done for you, Jesus? Look at his answer and repent. He says, Peter, I tell you the truth. No one, hey boy, say no one. Thank God he included me in that list. No one who has left home or wife or brothers or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will fail to receive 
many times more in this life and in the age to come. He said, don't you dare talk what you give your house to me. I own the one you gave up. And if you get into the kingdom life, I'll give you seven. You live in one and all the rest on lease. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you what God is saying to me. God said, I don't want you to live in a house. That ain't enough. I want you to have seven houses, put them on rent. So that you ain't got to pay nothing for the one you're in. And your grandchildren got income for the rest of their lives. That's kingdom living. In other words, we, we work all of our lives for this one house. One. We get we house, you know. And God's saying, that ain't no blessing. House don't bring in no income. He says, in my kingdom, having a house is not a blessing. In my kingdom, I give you many of them. Now you're blessed. I tell you all this three weeks ago, I can tell you this again. This thing is haunting me. A statement Jesus made to me when I was driving to church two weeks ago. He said, in the car, right down High Road, he said, if you had to work for it, it wasn't added. I'm still trying to wrap my head around that. <laughs> if I add something to you, you didn't earn it. So the house you're working for, you're working for that. He said, Peter, when you come to me and you, and you give me back the house, I give you seven. Four weeks ago, the Lord spoke to me. I told you all four weeks ago. He said, he said son, I'm tired blessing you. I said, what? He says, Blessing is not enough. I want to make you a blessing. Now you all can say amen louder than that man. See, in other words, I don't want you to have enough. He said, that even ain't my name. <laughs> God said, I don't want to pay your bills. I want to give you enough to pay other people's bills. Can you claim that right now? God said, look, Abraham, I'm going to bless you. Yeah, that's fine. But I'm also going to make you a blessing. And then I'm going to bless the nations through you. Let me tell you something. I know that I am a blessing to my wife and my family. But that ain't enough for God. I know. I'm a blessing to the Bahamas. But that ain't enough for God. He wants me to be a blessing to the nations. So he sends me around the world to bless them, lift them up, strengthen them, give them a new revelation of who they can become. He is using me to be a blessing. And so the Bahamas has put me in their tourism ad. That's not to be taken lightly. There are 300,000 Bahamians. In the ad, they got the, <laughs> they got the, the ambassador of America and Miles Monroe. He's making me a blessing. It shall happen to you in Jesus' name. You don't give up nothing for God, God says. I give you seven times more. You are on your way to revenue streams. I'm prophesying this morning. You all missed the blessing. I'm going to say it again. Lift your hand and catch this one. I said you are on your way to revenue streams. That means you aren't going to be living to pay bills. You're going to be living to collect. Shout hallelujah. Give God a big praise. How about a shout in this house? He said, I'm going to bless you and make you a blessing. I'm going to give you seven times more, he says. Don't brag about what you got, God says. 
that little money you got in your bank account. He said, that's a shame to me. And you so tight with that little money in your place this morning, hanging on to how much offering. God said, what are you talking about? Get it under the kingdom. I'll give you seven times. You know, here's something I want you to remember this. The first thing man thinks about are things. And that's why he can't live in the kingdom. This is your challenge. I want to give you a list to write down. Write this down, please. The power of things. Everybody say things. Say the power of things. I didn't realize how much of a prison I was of things. I am still being delivered. I am. It's hard to be delivered from things. As a matter of fact, Jesus saw things, as I said, as the enemy of the kingdom. Look at this. Mankind's motivation and drive is his preoccupation with the pursuit of things. Here's another thought to write down. Every thing we do in life is for things. Think about your life. Everything we do in life is for things. Why do you go to work? To maintain things. Why do you want a job? To buy some things. Why do you marry up? To have access to things. Why do people compromise their lives and sleep with the boss? They don't love him. They want more money to buy more things. Things are powerful. Write this down. All of our prayers are focused on things. These are unbiblical prayers. But look at our prayer lives. The average person, not the ones in this church, now you all learn how not to pray for those things, but the average person who are religious, they pray for things. They got a shopping list for God. Write this down. All of the faith is focused on things. You know, those people who've been focusing on the faith movement, now I'm not really, you know, condemning this movement, but I'm concerned because that movement has made things the object of your faith. So we hold faith for cars, faith for house, faith for food, faith for business. So we're you know, just holding faith for these things. And Christ says, what are you doing? Write this down. Religion is built on the promise of things. Hinduism, Buddhism, Shintoism, Islam, Scientology, and Christianity, study them. They are all built on promising you things. Appeasing the gods and then you shall have things. You'll have a harvest. You'll have a good harvest this year if you appease the gods, they say. So you offer these sacrifices to Mother Earth and Mother Sun and Mother Sea and Mother Dog and Mother Tree. And you have all these, these, these rituals. Christians do the same thing. Christians do the same thing. Except that they are turning it on Jesus. They use Jesus just as an object to get things. A religion of things. Things, write this down, are the source of all of mankind's problems. Things. The crime in our countries is motivated by things. Why would a man break into your house and steal your CD? Because it's a thing. Why would they break into the bank to go after the teller to get money? Things. Why would the young boys attack a young boy and beat him up and take his Nike shoes? Because of things. Why would a drug dealer put liquor and and, and coke down your children's veins because he wants a bling bling around his neck. Things. Why would a woman sell her body? She'd tell you, I got to keep my lifestyle up. Things. Why do you tell a lie on your job? Why you got to pad the books? Why do you have to, to white out? 
your invoice things why do you need to shack up with this fella things you say well, at least he pays my bills things listen why would a politician get kickbacks because he won't buy another boat things why would a preacher tell the deacon I can count the money myself because he want things think about everything think about everything I like the way Peter said it Peter just concluded Peter got a revelation one day Peter says you know something the love of money is the root ain't the devil nothing to do the devil he says things money to buy things the enemy of the kingdom is religion and things let me read a scripture for you Matthew 6 33 30 read so do not worry saying what shall we eat what shall we drink or what shall we wear for the pagans run after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need the things but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and then all of these things shall be added we have reversed it we go after the things and then we say now we got time for God So people so busy building their business, they stop coming to church, worship God. So I'm going to tell you to worship God right now. I got to try to build my business. When, when I get enough money, then I can come back to church and give God a blessing. May you and your business perish. And it will. Because if you pursue things in the place of God, they become your God. What's the command? Seek ye first. The kingdom of God. Look at the things he put in here. Look at the last part. He says, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. Verse 34. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble, man. Jesus talking, you know. Huh. Read verse 31. Read out loud. Therefore, come on, together. Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all of these things, the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. And therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow worry about its own things. Christ keep fighting things in this verse. This will be the best three months you've ever had in your life from here to Christmas. I'm prophesying, you better catch the breath prophecy. Because God is going to give you peace in your life, take away frustration, remove all the pressure, and under all that joyful experience, things can come by the thousands. The Bible says, the blessing of the Lord, make it one rich, and he adds no pressure to it. Give God a praise for that. Confess that. It says, he makes you rich without pressure. That's right, sister. He makes you rich without pressure. This is kingdom life. And my prayer for you is that you will walk in the glorious sunshine of the grace of his wonderful kingdom. That the day you will leave the pressure of things and enter the joy of the kingdom of God. May you remember that kingdom contains everything that a citizen's needs. Remember that all things in the kingdom belong to the king. Remember that access to the things in the kingdom are available to all the citizens by what? Right. Remember that things in the kingdom are not to be pursued. Remember that the pursuit of things is an expression of your distrust of the king. 
Remember that the pursuit of things in a kingdom is an insult to a king. Because a king takes care of his citizens. God's command to you today is seek first. Same command, no change. And to stay righteous. Clean your life up. Keep your pipe clear. Don't let no human cause you to clog up your pipe. Stay right with everybody, including your ex. Don't let no history clog up your future. Get over it and put it under the blood. Because your future is full of wonderful blessings. But you can clog them up. I know that young man didn't treat you right. He left you. You had a baby. He didn't take it. Hey, forgive him and keep your pipe clear. God's going to take care of you. He says, my eyes are upon you. Yes, I know they robbed you and didn't give you the right price. And they were, God said, let it go. Don't hold it in. Why? Keep your pipe clear. What they took, you're going to get it back. Because the wealth of the rich wicked is laid up for you. Release everything. Keep your pipe clear. These things are added.